Adding leafy vegetables to your diet is the fastest and most affordable way to load your body up with lots and lots and lots of nutrients. Leafy vegetables are extremely low in calories but are packed loaded with vitamins and minerals and are also extremely high in fiber which your body requires in great quantity. Now some of the benefits of leafy vegetables include it helps boost your immune system, it helps with your gut health, if you ever have a problem doing the number two in the morning or in the afternoon or at night, leafy vegetables is your best bet because it contains lots of fiber that helps free up your bowels and make it so easy for things to flow out of there very speedily. Trust me on that one, guys. Leafy vegetables also helps improve your brain health. It's also perfect for reducing your blood sugar levels. It's also perfect for reducing your blood pressure. There are so many health benefits that leafy vegetables have to offer you, and it's actually a great gain for you to incorporate leafy vegetables into your diet, especially because they're actually very, very affordable. Some examples of leafy vegetables that you can find in this part of the world would include African spinach, which is also popularly known as green. We have the pumpkin leaves, which are also called ugu leaves. Um, we also have lettuce leaves. We have leaves like water leaves. We have scent leaves. And then you can find kale leaves as well. You can find celery leaves. You can find, um, what are the leaves? Sorry? Spinach, the, no, we have, so there's the English spinach and there's the African spinach. You find English spinach here, but it's not as affordable as the African one. So there's a wide variety of, there's chard, there is, there's a lot of um, leafy vegetables available all around the world, but the ones that are prominent and you can easily find in this part of the world, which is Nigeria, would be the ugu, the pumpkin leaves, the green, scent leaves, water leaves, bitter leaves. Um, what are those other ones we use in cooking? Soups like achi leaves. There's so many leafy vegetables and trust me, all leafy vegetables are packed, loaded with lots and lots of nutrients. And for me, the high point is they're extremely low in calories. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five ways that you can incorporate leafy vegetables into your diet. And then I'll proceed to showing you how you can chop up your leafy vegetables easily without any stress and then how you can also store them up in the fridge to increase their shelf life. So today is just going to be pretty much all about leafy vegetables. So stick with me guys, let's get this started. Before I proceed to showing you five ways that you can inculcate leafy vegetables into your diet, if you've ever thought about inculcating more healthy ingredients into the food that you cook, but you never knew, like you just never um, figured out how to start or where to begin, I'd advise that you begin by actually adding leafy vegetables into your meals. Because of course, I've already mentioned their health benefits and because they're also very affordable and easily accessible as well. So start from there and then build your way up to adding other healthy ingredients as well. I'm also gonna be sharing with you some other healthy ingredients that you can gradually start to inculcate into your diet, but we're starting today with leafy vegetables. So five ways that you can inculcate leafy vegetables into your diet. So the first way to inculcate leafy vegetables into your diet would be making a meal the Igbo people like to call ji akukwoni. So this meal is just pretty much um, a yam and a vegetable dish where you cook your yam like yam like you're making yam porridge but then you end up adding a lot of vegetables to it at the end of it and then mixing it all up together trust me guys the taste of this dish is an absolute delight and for this particular dish you use vegetables like pumpkin leaves and um the African spinach, which we, call, we popularly call green here, or efotete. And then sometimes if you want to take it up a notch and add some more flavor to the dish, you just add some scent leaves as well, or and water leaves as well. So this dish is called ji akukwoni in Igbo language, but I think for English, we'll probably just call it yam and vegetables, right? I think. I think that's what we're going to call it. So that's a perfect way to eat more leafy vegetables. And I think you should incorporate that into your repertoire of recipes. The second way that you can incorporate more leafy vegetables into your meals would be making soups and stews. 
So when you're making your soups like a goosey soup or bono soup, um, when you're making soups like oha, all of those kind of soups that we usually enjoy in this part of the world, it's advisable that you add more leafy vegetables than you usually add. So when you're making a goosey, for example, I know that people just add the leafy vegetable just a little bit, just to sprinkle it so that the, the soup does not look naked. But instead of just doing just a little, go a whole nine yard and add a whole lot more. In fact, make the, make the leafy vegetable more than the soup itself. That way you know that you are inculcating a healthy ingredient into your diet and then you're feeding your body with lot, all the minerals and vitamins that it requires to function at maximum capacity. And then when you're making your tomato stew as well, I always say when you're making tomato stew, always use um, this leafy vegetable called green, that's the effortete, the African spinach. It's a total game changer for your tomato stew. It literally elevates the taste of the tomato stew, takes it from here to here really quickly. Trust me on this one, guys. Effortete in tomato stew is an absolute yes, yes. And you should definitely try it. And of course, it's a way to inculcate the leafy vegetable into your diet. The third way you can inculcate leafy vegetables into your diet would be making a sauteed vegetable. So pretty much it's you just sauteing a little bit of onions and pepper and then adding some seasonings and then throwing in the leafy vegetables, just similar to how you would make um, a foriro. That's the vegetable sauce. Just making a vegetable sauce that you can pretty much pair with your rice dishes. So if you've watched um, a video that I posted earlier, some time ago on does rice make you fat, I gave you like a ratio on how you should always serve your meals. Um, and I said your plate should always be made up of 50% veggies, 20% carbs, 30% protein, something like that. So um, making the sauteed vegetables like that time, making a vegetable sauce is something that you can totally and absolutely pair with things like your rice, when you're making jollof fries. So instead of filling up the plate with jollof fries, you can fill up quarter part of the plate with the jollof fries and then make the most of the plate, the item on the plate be the sauteed vegetables or the vegetable sauce. Because trust me, though, that, that leafy vegetables actually gets you filled up really quickly because it has a lot of fiber in it as well. So it's the perfect way to, um, so instead of using plantains all the time, for example, switch things up and try using leafy vegetables that you have just sauteed in some onions and oil and just uh, some seasonings and spices just to elevate the taste. Trust me, it's also a total game changer as well. So you can use it to enjoy things like your yam, your boiled yam, you can use it to enjoy things like pasta, plain rice or even jollof rice, things like beans, literally any, pretty much anything that you want to enjoy it with. So that's another way that you can inculcate it into your repertoire of recipes. And something that I also find that this um, vegetable sauce does is it's, it, it keeps really well in the fridge. And if you put it in the freezer, it also stays very fresh as well. So sometimes it can stay as fresh as two weeks. So you can make a big batch of it. And anytime you want to make your rice, beans, pasta, whatever it is, you can take it out and serve it alongside it so that it makes up the components of your plate. Remember the ratio that I gave when you're eating things like carbohydrate, always ensure that your plate is made up of 50% vegetables. And this leafy, sorted leafy vegetables that you have made can pretty much make up your plates. And that's a perfect way to inculcate it into your repertoire of recipes. The fourth way that you can inculcate leafy vegetables into your diet, this one is actually a recipe that I developed. And I remember the day that I was developing it, I wasn't really sure if it was gonna work. This is a recipe that I call effortete rice, right? So this recipe basically pretty much is like you making jollof rice, but um, you're adding effortete to your tomato and pepper blend. So when you're blending the tomato and pepper, you're adding vegetables like the green vegetables the effortete one it will form this really black puree but trust me guys when i was developing i wasn't really sure how it was going to taste or how it was going to turn out but trust me this was one recipe that was banging 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 to the core like it's my one way of making rice right now i don't want to make rice any other way so pretty much just adding effortete to your tomato pepper blend when you're blending and then cook it like you usually cook your jollof rice or your palm oil rice and then at the end as well you also add some extra um chopped effortete just to give the rice um some life and a pop of color 
This one is an absolute game changer and it has become one very main staple dish in my household. And I think that you should also try it as well. I call it Efotete rice. I'm going to film a YouTube tutorial for you guys on how I made it. I think I filmed a reel, an Instagram reel, and I posted it on Instagram, but I would film a more detailed recipe for YouTube and I'll share with you guys to let you guys know how to make it as well. The fifth way that you can inculcate more leafy vegetables into your diet would be making smoothies or green juices. I am a big, big, absolute big fan of smoothies and green juices, especially when I want to detox my body, cleanse my body, or when I'm experiencing severe bloating. I find that leafy vegetables actually help to reduce bloating and it also has anti-inflammatory properties that also might, like, like, I mean, everyone requires that in their bodies. So making smoothies and juices is another easy way to inculcate leafy vegetables into your diet. Those are pretty much the five ways that I have that you can inculcate more leafy vegetables into your diet. Now that you know the five ways, let me go ahead right now to show you how to chop up your vegetables really quickly without stress and then um, we'll proceed and then I'll also show you how to save them or preserve them in the fridge to increase their shelf life. This video is sponsored by Viva Dishwashing Liquid, your best bet for your hassle-free dishwashing experience. So guys, over here I have some pumpkin leaves also known as ugu leaves and then I also have some efotete which are also known as African spinach or green and I'm using this to demonstrate pretty much what I'm about to do now because these are the most common vegetables that you'll find in this part of the world and I'm going to show you guys how to store your vegetables first of all to increase their shelf life. So I have two methods that I like to use when I want to store my vegetables. The very first method would be um, with the use of paper towel or if you have paper or newspaper you can use that as well but I, I'm using paper towel and a ziplock bag but if you don't have a ziplock bag you can also use a, a paper bag or a nylon bag whatever it is you have so what I like to do is I just take the vegetables and pluck out the leaves out of the stem but still leaving just a little bit of stem at the edge and then what I do next is I just take out, I wash the leaves thoroughly, of course, allow it to dry, allow it to air dry on the countertop. And then after a while, if I find that it still has some water in it, I just take a paper towel and just dry it until it is completely or perfectly dried. The most advisable way would be to just leave it on the countertop for it to air dry on its own. And then when, you, when it is fully air dried, you take a clean, fresh paper towel that is dry and then just wrap the vegetables with, like so. Just wrap the vegetables like so. This is what you have. You have just like a bouquet of, of vegetables, right? And then place it into your Ziploc bag. Now, what you want to ensure is that you don't want the vegetables to have any form of moisture whatsoever when you're putting it in the fridge because that is what would make the vegetables go bad very quickly. You want the vegetables to be as dry as possible and I'm wrapping it in paper towel just to also ensure that the paper towel is catching any form of moisture and keeping the vegetables very dry. So all I'm gonna do now is just open up the Ziploc bag and put the vegetables in there, just like so. Again, you can do this with any type of vegetable. I just put it in there, seal up the Ziploc bag and I have my vegetables all stored nice and pretty and this can keep in the fridge for up to seven to eight days. I've actually tried it before. Sometimes it stays longer. You need to put it in the crisper part of the fridge. So the crisper part of the fridge is the fridge, the part where you draw out, where you draw open that just keeps, um, it has um, a humid temperature and is a perfect temperature to store your vegetables. So that's where I would usually store dry vegetables like this. So this is the first method. For the second method, the second method is like a wet method and this one is, um, is not my favorite method. This is actually my favorite method because I can store a lot of vegetables at the same time. But with this one, you really need a jar, like a lot of jars to store the vegetables. And this is a wet method and this actually also works really nice as well. So for this method, pretty much what you wanna do is just get a jar that has some water in it. And then what you wanna do is, just take the vegetables with the, with the whole stem, without cutting off the stem, and then just dunk it into the jar with the water. 
like I said, this is a wet method. So you just dunk into the jar like this. So the, so the stem is staying very much, very well hydrated and it's looking pretty. And then the leaves are just dry and out, just like so. It's just like you would have when you, when you get fresh roses or fresh flowers from your partner and you want to display it nicely, this is exactly what it will look like. To keep it dry and nice, you can either use a Ziploc bag to just cover it up or you can use a paper towel to wrap it up so that it doesn't dry out completely in the fridge. Yes, you want it to be dry, but you don't want it to, you don't want the temperature in the fridge to dry it out completely. So you still want to retain its freshness by just covering it up slightly and then just allowing a little bit of, um, just open it up slightly to allow some air to go in, just like this. Just open it up slightly to allow air to go in, but cover the bulk of it. And with this way, you can just put it in the fridge. Um, not the crisper part, you can put it on any part of the fridge. If you don't have a Ziploc bag, again, you can use a paper bag or you can even use paper towel just to wrap around the leaves so that it's not open or exposed to the temperature in the fridge. Those are the two ways that I store my vegetables to keep them lasting really long and fresh for a couple of days before they go bad. You can incorporate that and incorporate that into your storage tips right <laughs> so now that you guys know how to store um your vegetables i'm now going to go ahead and show you how i chop my vegetables very easily and i forgot to mention that before you store your vegetables ensure that you wash them thoroughly and allow them to air dry so you want to you don't want to keep dirty vegetables in your fridge wash them thoroughly, place them on the countertop, allow them to air dry, then you pack it or you store them whichever way that you prefer, okay? So let's now go to chopping up the vegetables. How do I chop my vegetables? I'll show you right now. So I'm gonna use this bunch of African spinach to demonstrate to show you guys how I chop up my vegetables. Some people are of the school of thought that you wash your vegetables before chopping. Others believe that you wash your vegetables after chopping. I am of the school of thought or of the opinion that you should wash your vegetables before you chop them because that way you are able to ensure that you take out all of the dirt and the sand from the vegetables and then um, without having to lose any nutrients at all because when you wash them after chopping you have bruised the vegetables and by bruising the vegetables when you dip it in water and you're trying to do that rigorous washing you're actually taking out some nutrients from the vegetables believe it or not so i advise that before you go ahead and bruise the vegetables by chopping ensure that it is thoroughly washed and then something else that i would also add here that helps you chop very easily is after washing allow the vegetables to dry up completely because when you are chopping your vegetables, you don't want the wetness, the wet vegetables sticking on your finger or on the knife or on the chopping board. It can be very irritating. So what I do is I wash and then I give it some time to air dry. So if I know that I'm using the vegetables um, for something, I always wash beforehand and ensure that it's air dry so that when I'm chopping, it is nicely dry. It is easier to chop your vegetables when they are nice and dry. So I thought to say that before showing you. So what I'm gonna do next is just pluck out the vegetables from this bunch. And when I pluck my vegetables, I also always like to pluck out some of the stem. So you find that there's some people just pluck from the leaves and just ignore the stem completely. But I always like to pluck from the stem so that the vegetable still has some stem because trust me, this stem contains some nutrients in it and you definitely want that in your vegetables. So I'm just gonna go ahead right now and pluck out as much vegetables as possible from this bunch. And then I'll come back and show you guys how I chop it. Something else that I want to add is when you are chopping your vegetables, notice that I am not scattering as I'm plucking out the leaves, I'm not scattering the leaves. The leaves are all placed in the same direction. Um, this would actually also make it very easy for you to chop as well. But if you have your leaves scattered, like some facing here, some facing there, just up and down, it's gonna make it difficult to chop it. So ensure that when you're plucking, your leaves are facing one direction like this. It makes chopping it so much more easier, okay? So I'm done plucking. I'll just use this to show you guys. I'll just move this to the side now. 
bring in the chopping board and the knife. Something else that helps make your chopping super duper easy and quick is using a very sharp knife and a chopping board as well. Trust me guys, you can literally cut this vegetable in less than 30 seconds if you have a sharp knife and a chopping board. Place the vegetables on the chopping board like so. Pretty much this and then firmly grip it around the center and then from one end, I usually like to start from the tail end, that's the stem end. I just place my knife on the board like this and I'm, go I'm going to go in this motion, just go like that. So what is actually moving is not the veggies. What is moving would be my knife and my other hand. So this other hand, let me just show you guys. So place the knife like this and then just go like this. So your hand, it's your two hands that are moving, not the vegetables. You can see how easy and smooth it's going. If you find that you have lost the grip of all the vegetables, put them together again tightly and then just continue the motion. It's okay if you're not getting even chops. You can go again and run the knife through the vegetables again a second and a third time until you have gotten your desired um, your desired size okay so anytime you feel like you've lost grip of the other vegetables hold it tightly again and then just continue moving your hand like this that's how you pretty much chop your vegetables super duper duper easily and I have long fingers for those who say they don't know how to cook with long fingers or they wonder how I cook with long fingernails I have long fingernails and I'm chopping this very easily. <laughs> so I just thought to say that it's actually a really nice method that works. Ensure your vegetables are nice and dry. Use a sharp knife and a chopping board and what you get is pretty looking chopped vegetables like this. Anyway, so this is what the vegetables is looking like. I love the consistency. I love the size. The size is the size of all the chopped vegetables are all even and that's how I pretty much cut all of my vegetables. So think every and any vegetable, just cut it that way, pluck it, ensure it's facing the same direction and then just chop, 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 chop. Easy peasy, right? 